I'm joined by U.S. Attorney Laura Duffy. Laura, welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. How big of a problem is pres prescription drug abuse among uh, our youth today? Without a question, the uh, prescription drug abuse uh, problems that we have in the United States are the largest drug problem that we have in the United States today. When did that happen? When did the eclipse, heroin, methamphetamine, cocaine, when did that happen? Well, it's been steadily happening over the last several years. Um, today, we have uh, more individuals in major cities, including San Diego, who are dying of overdoses than who are dying in car accidents. And that's in large part driven, according to the uh, CDC, by prescription drug abuse. So in San Diego as well, more people are dying of drug abuses from prescription drugs than any of the other drugs? Well, what we have is we have um, more recreational use of prescription drugs, particularly the painkillers, the oxycodones, the hydrocodones, which are the Vicodins and the Oxycontins is their brand names that they're known by. Um, so that use has surpassed heroin, cocaine, and hallucinogens combined. That's we've, amazing. We've got um, one in six teens right now who have used prescription drug medication that's not prescribed to them simply to get high or for a mood change. We have prescription drugs being the number one drug that's abused by children 12 to 13 years of age. So it's a serious problem. It's been a growing problem over the last several years. And the United States attorneys in the country and myself are joining uh, with partnership for uh, drugfree.org to get this message out, to get people educated about this, to get them aware of the trends, and to help people start taking action about talking to the young people in your lives and to make sure that the medicines in your home are safeguarded and to dispose of the medicines that you don't need or that are expired. Now you're, t you're talking about teens, a big problem with teens. Where are teens getting these drugs? Well, it's two places essentially. One, um, one of the things that our parents um, and adults in the community need to be aware of, their medicine cabinets and the internet are the back alley drug dealers mm -hmm. of today. So we've got two things going on. They're getting them in their homes, they're getting them from family, they're getting them from friends, they're getting them from um, friends of friends. You know, parents who have medicines that are left in the home, that are left in the medicine cabinet and the medicine pantries that are going unused. Uh, so we have that going on and that's a large source of supply for young people. But we also have um, drug organizations who are involved in um, distributing uh, pharmaceuticals to young people and to you know people of all ages really. Here in San Diego we're used to drug organizations, drug organizations south of the border, Mexican drug cartels. Is any of it coming from there? We have um, our traditional drug cartels are involved in this on one level and I'll explain that to you. But we have some cartels that are devoting their trade to pharmaceuticals. They're trafficking in pharmaceuticals. Uh, we have the traditional cartels who are getting involved because they're getting involved in taxing those pharma cartels um, in using their drug routes to bring drugs into the United States from Mexico. So let's just understand this. We have the traditional drug cartels and then we have ones that focus exclusively on pharmaceuticals and the larger, more traditional drug cartels are taxing these pharma cartels Correct. for distribution, Correct. essentially? Well, what we have is, you know, we have the traditional cartels um, that span all across the southwest border. Mm -hmm. In uh, the Southern District of California, uh, it's been the Tijuana cartel, the Ariano Felix cartel. Right. Uh, the Francisco Sanchez Ariano cartel, uh, Sinaloa cartel in other areas. And so those traditional drug cartels have very established crossing routes. And so for pharma cartel couriers to use those routes, they are being taxed for the right to do business. The route to cross the border and also right. distribution in the United States. Correct. Um, what are you guys going to do about this? What can you do? Well, we've been uh, focusing on this problem uh, really in our United States Attorney's Office since about 2009. We have prosecuted about 25 different cases uh, directed towards uh, pharmaceutical trafficking. Uh, we are investigating new cases all the time. They're time intensive cases because what you have is you have um, individuals in the United States who are diverting drugs diverting drugs from... Thank you so much, Laura Duffy. We're out of time. Okay. We'll have more on our website. Thank you so much. Okay.